Hello, it's a Monday and the time is, right, last Thursday I picked up the new car, um, I tried to film a few things but it wasn't enough to have as a, as a proper vlog, so I thought I'd take it for a run to uh, I think this is Coomden Beach and this is actually um, Bexhill Beach now when I was coming into Coomden Beach I sort of saw this at the corner of my eye so I thought I'd investigate and here I am right I've seen enough <laughs> because there isn't that much nice horizons so uh, I'm going to head back to the car now Right, this is the car, Ford Focus Z-Tech, just lock myself in, and it's a manual, and the last car was an automatic, so I've been trying to do a smooth transition through the gears, um, unfortunately I'm quite heavy handed, which means I'm heavy footed, feeted, heavy feet, footed, heavy footed, so when I put my foot down on the brake, it really does speed forward. Uh, everything is quick in this car. You brake, you brake quick. You speed, you speed quick. You open the door, it swings open quick. So I have to slow down. I also have to remember when I'm in a car park that I have to make sure I don't I drive off from the brake because if I let the brakes go, the car is not in natural first gear like in the auto automatic so I have to put it into first gear before I break off and I have to get to a biting point and whew, those things I have to remember but that's only natural you know you've only uh, haven't been driven a, haven't been driving a manual for a long time the weather's pretty nice as you can see, cloudy but there's blue skies, white clouds, some grey clouds, don't know what that means, the grey clouds, if it's coming or going, probably coming, so uh, yeah, this is the inside of the car, not much different I suppose, it's smaller which is what I've wanted, it's, I like white because that's my favourite colour. Uh, and I also wanted, I like Fords because they do drive smoothly, I find. So, really, I'm really pleased with it. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to shoot off now. Not sure where. I might head back home. Or I need to get. What do I need? I need some cornflakes. I'm running short on muesli. Down to one carton of grapefruit juice. I need another multi-pack of crisps. Right, I'm going to head to Tesco at some point. And uh, I'll bring you along. But my next port of call, I'm not sure about. Maybe Battle? No, Battle. If I go to Battle, I have to go to Bexhill. So I might head back, actually. Unless I see something that catches my eye. Check this out.
very posh. Oops, I have to put the. That's something I have to remember. That's another thing to remember. Remember. That is, I have to put my foot down on the clutch before I can start the ignition. Look at those lights. Two of them. Alright. There we go. So, the brake's on. First gear. Foot's already on the clutch. I put the foot on the. There you go. I can let go of the brake and move forward. And then move into second. Oops, there was a bit of judder there. Wasn't I did I did too quickly. I don't know why. Maybe maybe I've driven off so quickly I should go straight into third. That's another thing with this car. You have to do up to 20 miles per hour before you put it into third. Well, on my last manual car, which was a Vauxhall, it was always, I always put, I always put, right, let's see, there we go, that was this nice smooth transition from first to second, but in my Vauxhall, uh, Vauxhall, what was it, Vauxhall Vectra, I always used to do, when I went into 20 miles on the clock, 20 miles per hour, I would move it into second. No, I wouldn't, I would uh, I'd move it to third. Yeah, 20 to 30 third, 30 to 40 fourth. Oh, it's probably the same then. It's been so long I've forgotten. Cuden, Cuden Beach. Another of these tight roads, but not too tight. First to second, a little bit of a shadow there. I'll put it straight into first as soon as I hit 20. from someone who spent the last 10 years driving an automatic. This is Norman's Bay. I came here before but I didn't stop. Um, I can't remember why, probably because it was probably because it was raining. So I'm gonna have a quick I'm gonna go up those steps, have a look. It's probably the same as the Bexhill Beach. And then I'll pop back in the car again.
it's not much of a beach, but uh, I was wondering what was up the steps, but it's pretty much the same as Exhill Beach. Right, so I'm heading back to the car now. Gimmicks. Right, off I go. Uh, I was looking for this last time. This is Norman's Bay Station. It's good that I stopped because it reminds me to put the handbrake on so I can move my foot off the brake and onto the petrol. Oh my god! Oh my god. This is not good. I forgot about this. I hope there's not too many of them. Oops, oops, I'm gonna. Did I stall? Yes, I've stalled. Damn, damn. I was in second gear, you see. Oh dear. I think that's the second time I've stalled. Last time I stored was two days ago. I have to give way. This is like a one, one way, or one a single, single road. I made a similar commentary last time I went this way. Oh, look at these bumps. I just don't remember there being bumps last time.
is a nice place to walk, look. Perhaps I can find somewhere to park. Have a look. Bay Beach. Oh, oh shame I can't park here. Take up all the spaces. Let's see, maybe I can park on the pavement. I think we're heading towards Pevensey Bay now. just stopped here because a low flying bird I think it was too small to be a seagull sort of clipped my car so I'm just going to check out the damage also earlier when I was going through Norman's Bay uh, I brushed up against some bushes so I'm going to see what damage that done hopefully there isn't any but uh, we'll see right there doesn't appear to be any damage oh it's just water must have clipped the area or something Well, that was a relief. I am trying to be careful with this car. Well, I'm usually careful, but because it's new, um, it's just uh, I feel I have to be extra, extra careful. Oops. There you see, that's what I mean about having the handbrake on. Getting too confident. So first, right. Hopefully after this one. Yeah. Look at that weight in reverse. Can you believe it? Shudder. So I have to be 15 before I, 
50 miles per hour before I move into second. Just when I thought I was getting the hang of it. What's that noise? I think I might pull over and start off again.
arrived at Tesco, <clears throat> so I'm going to get cornflakes, muesli, milk, down to about two pints. Okay, milk, crisp. And I think that's it. I'm okay for butter, okay for cheese and garlic sausage. Down to one grapefruit, so I might get I get two more grapefruit. Yeah. Right, I got everything except for muesli. They ran out. And I checked the top shelf, which is where the boxes are, for replenishment. And I couldn't see the box. So they've went out. No point asking them because they've told me in the past that if it's not on the top shelf, you know unsealed well in a sealed box then it's not in stock but i've got enough i think for at least one day so i should be okay well right, i'm off home now and there's a couple at least two room escape games to play so uh I'll do that. I'll play those two. And I might have a cup of coffee with some biscuits. I was thinking of getting some hot cross buns because they're out at the moment, but cus customary, customary? It's customary to uh, have them at Easter. So I'm holding back until then. Right, so without further ado, off I go. Just emptied the shopping and I'm gonna chill in a few minutes. How much? How much? How much? How much? How much? <laughs> I might watch uh, a couple of YouTube videos maybe. Uh, this morning when I was having cereals, I was watching one of these Lego movies. It was only 45 minutes long, but it was one of the Superman characters that I'm that I've always been a big fan of ever since I was a kid, and that was Bizarro. And this Lego movie was called Justice League versus Bizarro Justice League. So uh, I thought I'd give it a go. I mean, it was tongue in cheek because it's really for children, but uh, yeah, it was good to see the storyline of Bizarro, um, which of course is, if you don't know who Bizarro is, he's Superman's imperfect duplicate. It's like do with Lex Luthor, Superman's um, main enemy. He had this self duplicator gun and Used it on Superboy and it backfired and it created uh, an imperfect duplicate. So you got the S back to fire, and instead of heat vision, you had ice vision, and instead of ice breath, you had heat breath. So I find it, it was I find it really interesting when I was a kid, and it was good to see a light-hearted uh, story on it in the shape of a Lego movie. So, uh, yeah, so I saw that. I um, can't think what else to watch on now TV. I think next, I think next week or the week after the past runs out. So I'll try and find some old classics to watch. But uh, I've got, in my wish list, I've got um, Philadelphia with Denzel Washington and 
Tom Hanks. And I'm not sure, I just haven't got around to watching it yet. I think it's one of those films where you have to be in the right mood. And The Nightmare Before Christmas, the stop, stop go animation. That's, a, that's a, I've never seen that. It's a Tim Burton f uh, film. And it has uh, that song. What's this? What's this? And, I've, uh, and it's a Christmassy one as well. I mean, last week I saw Polar Express, so <laughs> I can watch Christmas films anytime, really, especially trading places. I'm going to take change out of this coat and uh, chill. All right, watching some YouTube videos. A few minutes ago, I I called the bank because I saw an interest charge of seventeen pounds sixty nine, dated around the seventeenth of January on my latest credit card bill and uh, I was surprised because I paid the credit card bills by direct debit so there's no way I'm, I could fall into a charge so I rang them up first of all on the app I didn't have a number for credit card so I rang online got through to someone did the security check well first of all I had to wait to be put through which wasn't too long, probably three minutes, which is still too long really in my book. The fact you have to wait. Um, then I got through and then I had to do some security checks. Then I said, I'll have to put you through to the credit card department. So I got through and then this obnoxious bloke answered. Next thing I know, I got hung up. It's like worse than waiting to be put through and to be hung up like that. So I went on the internet and I googled the bank's credit card contact number and it came up. Google sort of um, found the first result and made a big uh, result for it so you couldn't miss it. So the, the font of the result was like three times as much. So I just, uh, because it was on the phone, I could click on it and ring and, ring and get straight to them. And I have to go through some options, one this, two that, two this, and then I spoke to someone, did another security check, and then they said, oh, I'll put you through to the credit card department again. Of course, I had to wait as well, uh, but not too long, just a couple of minutes again. So I got through, um, spoke to someone, then said to her, I got this charge, 1769, on my last credit card bill. And they said to me, it was because I purchased um, current euros on a credit card. And because I purchased euros on a credit card, it was a, some sort of quasi, a quasi transaction. And therefore, until the transaction, until the thousand pounds is paid on the credit card, 
there's going to be an interest on it. And that's what the 1769 was. There's also, in addition to the interest charge, there's a um, a £30 one-off charge for purchasing currency on a credit card. And this is for the trip to uh, Italy a few weeks ago at the end of December, the start of January. So, okay, I said, uh, I didn't know about that, but if that's the case, 50 pounds, 47, I have to pay it. There's still some more interest to pay, but it's going to be really small, about a couple of pounds worth or less that are pending since the payment. Well, the payment went through which was today, I think. So that was quite unnerving, to be honest. So I have to bear, must bear in mind never to buy currency on a credit card. Use a debit card.